Today we start our adventure from south east side of Turkey. We are in the borderlands. Five kilometers that way lays a Syrian border. Life here seems a little bit different. Merhaba. Merhaba. Şalka. Turkçe bilmiyorum. İngilizce. Evet, evet. Harika. Harika. Nasılsınız? İyi. Siz nasılsınız? İyi. Teşekkürler. İyi günler. Although as a kid I, I had a lot of toy cans myself then being so close to Syrian border it makes you feel a little bit different. I was the kid like them but like since it is all since it used to be a war zone around there, then uh, it's weird to see kids with the, with the guns. But uh, why we came here is a ancient uh, town called Dara. And once again, in Dara, there's a lot of uh, houses and structures carved into stone. We've already seen such, uh, such buildings in Cappadocia, for example, and around Konyaba. In here as well, just a lot of the rock surface has, uh, sh has been shallowed out. And there's churches, there's graves, there's ancient uh, living rooms. It used to be quite a huge city. Dara used to be a city in the northern part of Mesopotamia. It was on the borderline of Roman Empire and Persian Empire. And so a lot of conflicts between Roman and Persian have been fought here around Dara. What do you have there? Figs. They sold figs uh, next to the entrance to Dara and they taste amazing. And uh, well, we're gonna go and discover a little bit of Dara our ourselves. There's so many places around here with those old uh, uh, cave houses. So we're just gonna go and check out a few over there. So it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and it's already around 40 degrees outside. That's what desert does to you. As we've come further east in Turkey then, first of all, of course, the land we, uh, landscape has changed. But what also has changed is that instead of uh, cars and vans and trucks, there's way more horses and donkeys. Nasılsınız? I guess we have a new heat record today, 43 degrees in a van. And uh, so the sad thing is that uh, our phones are also overheating, so our GPS doesn't want to work. So we just parked the car and we're gonna go on foot from now. The second city we're visiting 
in uh, eastern Turkey near Syrian border is Mardin. It's once again historically quite important place. Romans before that Persians and probably all the way to the beginning of bigger civilizations this place has been occupied and this is because Mardin lays on top of a hill and from top of it it looks all around the plains and on river Tigris so it was strategically a really good place to keep an eye on the surroundings and also since it lays on the, on the plains of Mesopotamia it was a important place for agriculture as well as trade Smiling? No. No! Can you feel how wet my back was? We're now getting to the Grand Mosque of uh, Mardin. This really is a grand mosque, it's huge, it's glorious and it's so peaceful in here. The whole town of uh, Mardin, it has really calm and relaxed feeling and it really feels that people have not seen tourists here in a long, long while. They're all really surprised to see us, asking us where we're from, what's going on. A lot of streets are not accessible by car because they're either too narrow or there are stairs. So these beautiful animals come really handy in here. Mardin is such a beautiful town. We didn't spend a lot of time in here, but the few hours we've been here, gorgeous. And the people are so lovely, so calm. Walking in this town, it really makes you uh, walk slower. For not the second we, we rushed, we just kind of chilling around and enjoying taking it all in. And we even forgot how hot it was and that is really worth a lot to be able to say that. Today we woke up to quite a beautiful sight. We've been uh, moving on on eastern front of Turkey and yesterday evening was a long drive. From where we got to the border with Syria we've had quite a few road stops. Road stops. Usually they don't uh, uh, even bother with us when they see our uh, number plate but in here you can really feel the military presence and well there's a reason as well because uh, behind those mountains over there there is uh, Iran but why have we come to this place so close to the Iranian border Iranian border is this thing over there that's Ishak Pasha palace it's a Ottoman style palace and uh, well we haven't seen a palace in Turkey before so we're gonna go and have a look
Now let's do the Mina. Without a doubt, it's the most beautiful mosque we've been so far. Wow. My, my whole imagination just started working and working while being over here. Like how the Pasha had his harem of women and where they were, where they bathed what they ate and it's just so gorgeous. I have like one million pictures taken from here. Vishak Pasha's palace was worth it, worth it and hundred times worth it. Such a gorgeous place. And now we're gonna keep on heading north on the eastern border. Can you see that over there? This mountain has snow. I can't believe it. It's over 30 degrees outside for months and Mount Ararat is still covered with snow. It's Turkey's highest peak. A cool fact is that Mount Ararat was first conquered by an Estonian. Those sand dunes or mountains or whatever are so beautiful that we made a little stop and we're gonna go and climb one. Turns out that you don't have to go to Peru for some rainbow mountains. Freaking gorgeous! We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you on my side. Cool thing we've only seen in eastern Turkey, not anywhere else, are those bricks in here. Those bricks are made out of poop. And uh, my educated guess is that summertime they pile up uh, poop and wintertime they use it to heat their houses. Only trees you can see in here are the ones that people have planted themselves next to their, their homes. Poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, poop, Bricks of poop. That's how you make firewood in here, or fire poop. <laughs> that flag is up there for a reason, because uh, kilometer that way is Armenia. If you can see those mountains, that's already Armenia over there. And in between we have Ani, and uh, where we'll go and see how those ruins of Ani look like. Like can be seen from the city wall, walls, Ani was once a huge, huge city. It was the capital of Armenia around a thousand years ago, or the country that was Armenia back then. And it was called the city of 1001 churches. But the faith of Ani 
wasn't so glorious. At first it was raided by Mongols and then uh, a big earthquake took its toll on the town and by 17th century the city was widely forgotten. church it's just so well preserved it's built over a thousand years ago wow why do you look so excited so it's been a while since we last saw a cloud It is almost very beautiful. Do you know why almost? Trash! Turns out it's all about tangle. Here it's 100% beautiful. I did not expect to see anything like this in Eastern Turkey. Wow! Just look at that. It is a little bit cold in here. I think it's like 20 degrees, but coming from 40, it feels really cold. Before we were whining about the heat, now we're whining about the cold. Yes, we're whiners. Whoever said that we're happy with very little was very wrong. Yes, whiners. We whiners. <laughs> no, no, no, whiners. <laughs> Salty, so it checks out. This over there is the Black Sea. We've made it, and Black Sea for us means that Eastern Turkey is done, and we're now in the northern part of Turkey. You already saw from the last clips that the landscape in the northern part it is different. It's so green, it's luscious, and just so I can do it one last time. 20 kilometers that way is Georgia but we will see you guys next time take care